Jeff Montgomery here with Accurate Rifles and Restorations, bringing you another exciting review slash build video. This time we're going to be working with uh, one of the brand new Weatherby 307 actions. I thought this would be kind of neat because there's not a whole lot of info out there right now about these actions. So we're going to take the risk and uh, go ahead and be your guinea pig here and see uh, how, how everything turns out, how it shoots, things like that. So we'll go over some of the features of the action and uh, whatnot. So the box that came in is nothing fancy. Uh, this is my, uh, for my boy, Kurt. Uh, shout out to Kurt. Good dude. Um, known Kurt for several years now and seems like a solid individual. So we're going to build him a rifle. <clears throat> so uh, it's kind of nice to see not real fancy, no frills box here. They're not wasting money on packaging because, I mean, who the heck saves this stuff? So in the box, you got this, you know, just general packaging material, soft, cushy, not bubble wrap, but the, uh, the other, whatever you call it, and a wedge of foam. <laughs> it's just, just kind of dropped in there. Uh, I wasn't the one that opened this and received it, so I don't know what the presentation was, if there was any or anything like that, but uh, this is what I was handed. So, so there's the box it came in. And uh, inside the box, we've got a builder's, well, spec, spec sheet, I guess. Um, they call this the builder's action, model 307, builder's action. So obviously, you know, a guy like me is going to be building the rifle from the action, right? So <laughs> uh, clever, I guess. Um, so uh, the action itself, let's go ahead and dive right into that. What we got here is this looks like a Remington 700. Copy, clone, deal. Uh, round action, just like the old Remington 700. With the exception of a pin. So we've got a, here's to be a roll pin for your recoil one. So no, there's nothing integrally built into this such as your recoil lug or your picatinny rail. So all that stuff is separate. And I didn't see a pick rail in the box. I don't know if Kurt or whomever the FFL transfer guy uh, held on to that or what. It was not in there, so I'm not real sure if that comes with it or not. I would have to check with Weatherby on that. So uh, I'm just working with what I got here. So <laughs> anyway, uh, we've got a pen, like I said, for the recoil lug. And being a roll pin, it's not a snug fit. <clears throat> it's uh, not a press fit or anything like that. So that simply just keeps it aligned. Uh, there's really no other purpose other than keeping that thing aligned as you're screwing the barrel on and then into its stock in the bedding or, or whatnot. <clears throat> so separate recoil log. Let's see what this guy measures here. 192.85, 193.10, right on the money, up here, 193, maybe let's check this side again, yeah, 193 all around. So that's nice to see, it's precision ground recoil log, obviously it's been seracoded or whatnot, but, uh, and then on the body of it we've got some kind of wording here 307022-2 and then 0 0.191 oh i bet it's the cerakote that has that 2000 seems like a hell of a lot for cerakote but there we go 307022-2 and then two or sorry 191 i'm gonna go with what my micrometer is telling me here which is 193. So 193 thickness. <clears throat> and then the inside hole is one, 
0.068 or so for the internal diameter. So a little bit larger than the thread tenon. <clears throat> uh, moving right along, we've got a gas exit port <clears throat> here, uh, in case you blow a case. Um, gases will be dumped out to the right. Pretty typical of a uh, Remington style. Uh, kind of a fancy ejection port cut here. A um, little bit more sleek and certainly more room there. Moving on back, this is a right-handed action, so you've got your cutout for the log, or for the bolt handle. Uh, and then, obviously, a trigger. Trigger pins here for your typical Remington style trigger. And then front and rear action screws, which should be quarter 28 if they're following the Remington uh, Bible. <laughs> All right, so flipping it around, we've got the Weatherby W. And then Model 307 Weatherby. <clears throat> and this is made up there in their new plant at Sheridan, uh, right here in good old Wyoming. And then I've taped off the serial number. I'm not, I'm not real sure if that's necessary, but I'm sure Kurt would appreciate people not knowing a serial number. And then a side bolt release, bolt stop bolt release. Uh, typical for you, what you'd see on modern Remington clone actions. Um, so yeah, bare bone, no frills, no, no huge fanciness going on here. It's, uh, it is what it is. Uh, I believe these come in, this retailed for $749.99. Doll hairs uh, in USD, US American money. As of uh, April 2024. So like I said, there's the action, or the uh, receiver portion and recoil lug. So onto the bolt, again, uh, another kind of take on a Remington 700 style. Uh, with a few exceptions and differences, obviously. Most of these guys have a little bit different way of doing things, at least in the shroud and handle and knob and all, all that good stuff. Um, before I get into the bolt, but back up just a second here. I was gonna provide some dimensions of the action, or the receiver, excuse me. So, not a precise way of doing this or by any means, but hey, whatever, we're gonna burn two inches. <clears throat> we're coming in at, it looks like 8.7, 8.75 length. This is the long action style. The short action apparently comes in at 7.9 inches. Uh, the advertised weight, and it says action, so I don't know if that means the bolt and the receiver, or just the receiver. This is certainly not lightweight. This is this has got some heft to it. It's not heavy, but it's not like anti-X light. So, let's see here, the weight on this guy is 1.78 pounds. Yeah, like I said, not uh, certainly not the lightest action out there. And that, that feels like 1.78. I don't have a scale that is that sensitive. Uh, but together, that's, uh, that feels heavier than 1.8 pounds. It does not have a bolt weight. So again, I'm not sure if that's gonna be just this portion or both, the entire thing, recoil lug, everything, or not, either way. Uh, a couple more things about it. You've got your 90 degree bolt throw. So here it is closed and then open. So let's put it on a straight and then open. Yep, that's about 90. 90 degree bolt throw. The bolt knob itself here is threaded onto the handle quite tightly so I can't unscrew that, but it does say it's got 5 16 24 under here. Um, let me grab it with something. Pad a jaw, see if I can get it loose. So your bolt knob, like I said, typical, uh... oh. Huh, look at those threads. That's a little weird. 
So, huh. And then look at the seam here in the middle. I wonder, is this even steel? Yeah. So it's magnetic, so I assume that's steel, but now it's looking to me like this has been possibly injection molded. So look at the seam right there on the stem of the bolt. And that seam rides all the way up to the threads. And then the threads are flattened off there. Shiny there, I'm not real sure what's going on there, but okay. And then, yeah, another kind of sign of a being a mold, almost. Yeah, I bet you this is injection molded. The handle, I'm not talking about the entire bolt. And the handle's removable, we'll show you that in a minute. But, uh, interesting. I'm not saying it's bad or good. Just interesting. Yeah, I don't, you don't see that too often. And then the handle, that feels like aluminum. Yep, <clears throat> well, it's not sticking. Could be titanium, but I highly doubt it. Most likely aluminum. By the looks of the insides there and everything else, that's uh, definitely probably aluminum. So we'll get this back on without buggering anything up, ideally. There it goes, okay. So, I don't know what real knob you could replace this with unless maybe Weatherby offers different styles. The reason is it's so it's so small, it's so small, that uh, aftermarket bolt knobs are certainly gonna be bulky, big, whatnot. It's got a relief cut, so you should be able to screw most of anything else, uh, any other style on there that you would want. This one's got a very healthy relief cut inside. So yeah, there's the, uh, the knob itself. So, uh, 5 16ths, 24 threads, like I mentioned earlier. Okay, so what else we got here? There's no, again, this is all I got in the box. I'm not sure what it comes with. Typically, it wouldn't come with a magazine or anything like that. But it is stating here on the spec sheet that the mag box lengths are 2.97 for a short action and 3.95 for a long action, which is very healthy length. So you can basically shove any cartridge you want in there. Um, obviously not a 50 cal or something weird, but uh, certainly will accommodate the seven PRCs and the, the super long uh, cartridges we got out nowadays, 26 nozzlers and things like that. Okay, um, you get a choice of three different bolt face sizes. You got your standard 473, in uh, short action and long action. And then the long action comes with also a Magnum, which is about 0.543. So that's a little interesting too. You don't get a choice of anything other than standard for a short action. So you basically you're stuck with the 308 case kind of style, 6.5 Creedmoors. So you can't, you can't do any short Magnums <clears throat> or uh, PRCs or anything like that in the short action. So that may be a little problematic with the 6.5 PRC because it definitely likes a medium style. These are too long for them. What typically happens is they'll 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 have feeding issues because they're short. So that's why they like that medium action. But this is going to be a 7 PRC, so we should be okay. We'll, we'll find out, I'm, I'm sure. Okay, um, it's got a listed headspace and they are calling it 0.899 plus or minus zero bolt phase two recoil lug. Right, so we're gonna measure things. Uh, definitely gonna measure this, but I'm, they're referring to this surface to the bolt face down in there. So that's your headspace, so that should measure 0.899. We'll, we'll verify that, obviously. <clears throat> uh, breach dimensions. So, the breach, this is gonna be a recess breach because of your bolt head as the 
the uh, protruding bolt nose. So that will be encapsulated inside of a recess inside of the breech of the barrel. And they're telling us that it's going to be 0 0.740 depth measured from tenon shoulder. So on the barrel, you know, you got your threads cut and your shoulder, which would torque shoulder essentially. And that's, they're saying 740 depth from back here to here. I'm not sure why you wouldn't take it from the breech face, but hey, whatever. Different ways to skin a cat on that. Mm -hmm. And then 715 inner diameter. So the, uh, the recess to hold this bolt nose here will be 715. What do we got? Not quite 700, 699. So 715 is gonna be the recess diameter, which should give us plenty of clearance for that M16 style extractor to swing out and capture the case. All right, and then lastly, we have tenon threads, which is called out. This is gonna be a typical Remington thread. What do you know? One and one sixteenths by 16 inch thread. And they are stating 0 0.880 long. <clears throat> so anyway, again, I'm not gonna trust that. I, you know, I'll trust it, but I, I'll still verify it with measuring and everything. I'm gonna measure that stuff and uh, get a spec sheet going proper. The bolt. So we'll start at the start at the front and work over back. So the bolt, again, another Remington 700 style. Spring loaded ejector. I've already removed that, but that should look familiar to anybody that knows the Remington 700. There's your ejector. Um, nothing really different there. In fact, that's a direct copy right down to the roll pin. So we'll put that in the bag. We're not gonna need that right now. Put it back in the box so I don't lose it. So your spring-loaded ejector pocket will be right here. Oops, here. Uh, firing pinhole, obviously. And a M16 style claw extractor pre-installed. So that's nice. And that holds your case in the uh, chamber and then fires and extracts and then ejects. Just like that. Uh, three pin for your extractors here held in. Another roll pin looks like a 332 tooths roll pin, as well as the ejection ejector roll pin. Nicely fluted bolt body. Uh, that's makes it look a little snazzier. Uh, faceted bolt shroud. So kind of nice. Uh, this is called. Uh, this is what's referred to as a toolless uh, disassembly for your bolt. Uh, you can see the bolt rides through and sticks out here. So that's the other end of this stem. So a lot of times you rotate this to a certain place. Let's see here. So maybe like there, and then you pull out. All right. Is that coming out? So it's starting to come out. <laughs> But yeah, that's not moving any further. So we'll rotate this back to the notch. And I don't see any pins or anything. So sometimes you push down. I think with these you push down on the shroud. So maybe pushing down and then pulling on this. See if that gets it out. Yep, I feel it coming out. All right, there we go. Okay, so that was easy. So again, just push this on the table, push the shroud part down. This part. Push that down as far as it goes and then yank that out. And we should be able to put that back in the same way it came out. So before we do anything else, let's make sure that works. There it goes, okay. <clears throat> okay, so yeah. It's a strong spring, but it, it's easily removable. 
So we'll take that out of it again. Pull that out. So again, there's your knob and handle assembly. So yeah, that'd be really tricky to a machine. So I bet your bottom dollar, this is definitely an injection molded. Some sort of injection molded part. So that leaves us with our striker assembly. A hefty amount of lithium grease there. So, anti-snake spring looks like, and a nicely machined lightweight firing pin, or striker, whatever you want to call it. I'm not going to go any further than this. There's a little nub there, I'm not sure what that's for, right there. Um, but, yeah, look at that, it's probably, I'm not sure, I don't really want to mess with taking this apart in this video, so we're just going to leave that. I just need to get that out so I can feel for headspace and things like that. Um, so again, we don't have any threads inside there, that's just a... See through it. Okay. <clears throat> just a hollowed. Excuse me. Just just a hollowed out uh, bolt body there. Um, the the logs appear to be machined. So this is all one part machined. A little complex geometry going on back here. Not sure how they would do that hole but uh, CNC robots can do crazy stuff these days. Right, so there's that. And then for checking things, we can still put the handle back in to uh, close that in the receiver when we got the barrel installed and checking out headspace and whatnot. So now that'll allow us to use the bolt without any resistance in the back with the firing pin assembly, striker assembly impeding our feel for uh, headspace. So that is, uh, that's the action. <clears throat> really nothing else to go over here. So we'll see. Um, I will definitely double check the threads here. So I got my standard 700 1.062 uh, thread checker. And if the spec, spec sheet is correct, it should just Thread right in, just like that. And it's uh, it's not a loose fit, so that's good. You know, I can screw this in all the way by hand, but it's not rattling or anything, so that's good. So nicely machined threads there. Okay, so I think that's enough blabbering for that. As you can probably see, this is going to feature a proof research barrel. This is a 22 inch. I don't know what's wrong with Kurt that he wants such a short barrel. Uh, but uh, you know, we're not all, we're not all perfect. We all, some, some of us have our flaws and, and we like short barrels. So, you know, hey, you wanna shoot a 7PRC with a 22 inch barrel? That's that's all on you, buddy. <laughs> yep, I can hear him now. Oh, I got a suppressor, so it's gonna be 30 inches long. Uh, come on, guys. Do you like velocity? Do you like bullet stability? I don't know. Anyway, proof research, seven millimeter. We got a one and eight. Twist, at least you got the twist rate, right? And, uh, you know, typical carbon fiber barrel. This is, gosh, I don't know, what is this, the 20th proof barrel we got in the shop so far? We've got a lot of these in the first year here, so. Uh, very popular barrels, I can't uh, can't deny that. They are excellent. 
I will be borescoping this just as a CYA aspect because I don't believe these get borescoped from where wherever Kurt got them from. So I want to make sure that that board is flawless before I start uh, wasting my time machining on uh, everything, getting it all together, giving it off to Kurt and have it not shoot. That's the one lesson we learned the one time. So we borescope all the barrels now. <clears throat> So we're gonna bore scope that, make sure the border is pretty, has no flaws, is, uh, we'll slug it, make sure it's consistent from end to end in terms of diameter, you know, so a lot of times slugging, you can feel if that bore opens up a little bit towards, like in the middle or towards the end or something like that. So we'll check that. Let's put the barrel through its valuations and uh, ensure that that's gonna be a quality barrel for the life of this rifle. So to get the barrel, the uh, dimensions and specifications and tolerances and things for our barrel, we're going to go ahead and measure as we always do. Um, I've taken a precise measurement of this. We know that's 193. So then I'll measure from face here down to the bolt, the different features of the bolt and get our extension length and the recess length and our headspace number. It was called out on the sheet, but I wanna, I wanna verify that by measuring myself. I, I don't trust anything or anyone, so uh, you know, never assume anything, that kind of thing. So we'll be using the depth micrometer to get, get a lot of that uh, information off of the action. <clears throat> then, Typically what I do, this is a 22 inch barrel. So as a lot of you guys, at least subscribers know, my lathe is, my headstock is extremely long. So I can't hold this in my headstock in your traditional way of holding it with a spider because I need 20 and 26 inches or more to do that. So with this barrel, we're gonna do the muzzle end first. We're gonna do the muzzle work. We're gonna cut that off, the little stub there. Give that back to the Kurt and then proceed to thread this. He wants 5H24 threads. So we'll thread that, and then that will allow me to put my barrel extension on so that I can get it in the, in the machine and properly center and align that barrel, uh, both <clears throat> round and axially. So you'll see a little bit of that, how it sticks out. And then I could put an indicator on. And then I could do indication of the barrel in the chamber part portion. I don't care what's going on out here. It could be flopping around like this for all I care. What we care about is right here. Uh, keeps everything close to the, uh, to the chuck and the working end of everything. But anyway, we'll get the measurements going. And then the only other steps, uh, obviously is going to be turning down the tenon to the proper diameter, 1.062. Uh, I'm going to turn it down a little short of the ultimate length or the overall length so that we can finish that off at the end after it's threaded. So once that's turned, we'll come back in with a 60 degree threading tool and thread that to 16 threads per inch until it uh, fits the receiver best, not too loose, not too tight. Once we know that's all fit, we will correct the length of the tenon to the proper length. We will then cut the recess for the bolt nose to a proper diameter and proper depth. Once that's finished, we come in with a drill, pre-drill. And uh, seven PRC is gonna be, I usually use a 15 30 tooth uh, 15, 30 seconds drill, just to clear out the material. And then after that, I'll come in with a boring bar and just skim pass and clean that drill hole up to provide a nice surface for the reamer to begin cutting on. I don't cut so deep. I, I always leave enough room that that pilot will be still engaged. So it'll be, Usually it ends up somewhere like, like that, <clears throat> right about there is where the hole will end. 
and that way my pilot will be able to be captured so that the reamer is not just floating around loose until it finds the finds the bore. We want to make sure it's in the bore before it starts cutting anything. <clears throat> so that's easily achieved. Not hard. Okay, so after the chamber is cut, you know, get a little bit of chamfer action. A chamfer, the mouth of the chamber and the mouth of the recess, uh, just to allow that cartridge not to get snagged up on a square shoulder, on a sharp shoulder. So it, it allows it to feed in a little nicer and it doesn't uh, scrape up the case like a square shoulder would. And also looks nice. And uh, once those uh, chamfers are cut, we're just gonna go in there and polish the chamber until it's about 320, finish. Give it a little bling. Uh, that way the case doesn't have anything to snag on because we're under detonation. Obviously we've got an explosion happening, controlled. That case will expand and then let go. But as, if there's some, if the, if the chamber is not smooth, then you have a propensity of this getting stuck because the case will swell up and fill any voids or any kind of weird stuff that might be in the chamber. So that's why you polish, just to make sure. If there is anything weird, you have you got to recut the chamber, basically. <clears throat> so we'll be checking all that throughout the process. Okay, and there we have it. A another rifle is born here at Accurate Rifles and Restorations. Uh, just to recap, we've got a Weatherby 307 model 307 builder's action. Uh, with a proof research, 22 inch barrel. Chambered in 7 PRC. That's precision rifle cartridge. Developed by Hornady. And uh, it's a really good cartridge. It's proved itself throughout the years just fine. Um, very uh, capable cartridge for long range hunting and shooting. Uh, in the introduction and the review of the receiver, I neglected to mention the drilled and tapped holes on the top. These are 840s, so that's that's nice to see. The thing that's not exactly nice to see is that this is not a Remington style top, meaning you ain't gonna get any Remington pick rails to fit this. So this is gonna either need Proprietary, I don't, again, I'm not sure if this came with a rail. I'm gonna have to check with old Kurt, see if that is the case. Um, that would be really nice because, like I said, you're not gonna just pick, a, oh, it's a long action 700 and stick that on. One, the uh, hole spacing in the back is completely wrong. These need to be closer together. And then two, uh, the, the top bridge here. Typically on a Remington, you've got a radius like up front here. This is uh, typical, but in the back, it's flattened and lower. So you're not gonna get a Remington 700 rail on this. That's kind of a bummer. I'm not sure why companies do that. I don't know if they have to pay rights to Remington to copy that or, or what, but uh, uh, for whatever case, Weatherby did not do that. So that's kind of disappointing. Um, other than that, it seems like a fine action. I don't know, it's just, uh, again, it's just, it really is. I hate to say it's just a Remington 700 because I, I don't subscribe to the belief that those are crappy guns. They are very nice. <laughs> Although, albeit it's my bread and butter, but hey, you know what? There's a reason for that. They actually, you know, they work. They shoot good. So there's the 5.8, 24 thread on the muzzle with a 60 degree crown. So combination 60 degree crown transitioning from flat to the, the bore. So that's what that little shiny chamfer is, a 60 degree, essentially internal crown. And then again, you got your one and one sixteenth by 16 thread per inch uh, thread tenon for the action. So everything went together just fine. Um, I no complaints here. Uh, I, it's a great barrel, so I mean, unless something's completely wonky inside the receiver there, 
or the bolt, this, uh, this should be an excellent uh, rifle. So we'll get a trigger back on this. I got to test fire it before I deliver it back. But that completes this job. Again, mainly it was just to kind of show off. I've not seen one of these 307s yet, and I reckon a lot of you guys haven't either. So I thought it'd be nice just to take a moment and, and uh, record some of that and uh, share it with y'all. Uh, these retail for $750. At least that's the MSRP, I think, suggested retail price on these. Maybe, maybe a little less, maybe a little more. I'm not sure. But uh, to me, it seems like that's a good value. So you're getting, you're getting quite a bit for that price. Uh, admittedly, I did not test anything as far as uh, concentricity or flatness or squareness on, on this. You know, we could, uh, down the road, if I get another one, I might slap it in the blueprinting jig and see, just kind of take some measurements, see what kind of run out we're looking at on this. Hopefully, maybe we'll make an update uh, video down the road here, but uh, we're gonna wrap this one up here, uh, just as is. Like I said, I don't have the stock. I'm not sure what the, what the deal is there. If we're just gonna clamp it in that and go or whatever, but uh, this ends my portion of the of the job. <clears throat> so we're just gonna, we're gonna call it done here. And uh, thank you for watching. And we'll see you guys later. <laughs>